Winston Churchill famously said that Russia is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. He said those words over 80 years ago, just before the beginning of the Second World War. But this description still rings true to us. Russia still remains this riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma, and it is very often the duty of writers and artists to solve puzzles like this. And that was exactly what John Steinbeck and Robert Kappa decided to do. They decided to travel to the Soviet Union to reveal the secrets that were hidden there. Of course, for you and me, there is a question of what was the source of their motivation? Why did they decide to travel to the Soviet Union, which was ruled by Stalin right at the beginning of the Cold War? And actually, Steinbeck mentions the source of their motivation right at the beginning of his book called A Russian Journal, which this video is about. Uh, he says that he and Kappa noticed a rapid decline in the quality of journalism. I actually would like to read that passage for you. He says that we were depressed, not so much by the news, but by the handling of it. For news is no longer news, at least that part of it which draws the most attention. What we often read as news now is not news at all, but the opinion of one of half a dozen pundits as to what that news means. Both of them could notice that the difference between fact and opinion was becoming blurry and very often journalists were telling their opinion and presenting it as a fact. And Steinbeck writes that the purpose of their journey is going to be to write it as it happened, day by day, experience by experience and sight by sight. We shall write what we saw and heard and know that this is contrary to a large part of modern journalism but for that very reason, it might be a relief. And of course, it wasn't particularly easy for an American journalist to apply for a visa to the Soviet Union, which was ruled by Stalin right at the beginning of the Cold War. But fortunately for all of us, they were successful and they were granted their visa and they began to pack. It was much more difficult for Kappa, who was a photographer and had to pack a lot of equipment for his cameras. In total, he had like seven or eight suitcases alone for his camera equipment. It was much more easier for Steinbeck, who had to carry like five or six notebooks with some ink in his suitcase. This journey was full of obstacles and one of the first problems was that there were no direct flights between the United States and Soviet Union. So they had to make several changes and carry all those Kappa's suitcases with his camera equipment from flight to flight until they could get to their direct flight to the Soviet Union. And they took that flight from Helsinki airport in Finland. And there was a funny story of how they were sitting at the airport and waiting for their Soviet uh, plane to arrive and when the plane landed just in front of their eyes, one of the tires of that plane exploded. Um, I don't know what about you, but I'm a quite anxious flyer, so I think if I was Steinbeck, I would have quit at that moment. Their journey was delayed for 24 hours, and they took that plane and flew to Moscow. The funny part was when they landed, there was an American correspondent who was supposed to meet them, and he didn't turn up at all. But eventually they got into the hotel where all all American journalists used to stay, and as a revenge, they drank the whiskey of the correspondent who failed to meet them. And of course, Robert Kappa, being uh, one of the greatest photographers of his time, wanted to take photographs. And in order to do that, they had to apply for permission. And there was a lot of uncertainty about that, because some people were saying that uh, it takes two to three months, some people were saying that you can get it in two weeks. There is a really funny story that Steinbeck mentions about their time in Moscow. Once they were at the restaurant with other uh, American correspondents, Steinbeck noticed that it takes a really long time for food to be served. He waited for an hour and a half for what he ordered, and one of the correspondents explained uh, the reason for this. It was that when waiter took order from a guest, the first thing that he had to do was to go not to the kitchen, but to a bookkeeper, to tell to a bookkeeper what the guest had ordered, so, so bookkeeper could register what was sold. Then waiter would take a piece of paper and bring it to the chef at the kitchen, and chef 
chef would start to cook. And after the food was ready, waiter had to take another piece of paper to bookkeeper to register that the food had been served. So there was four or five different transactions, a huge bureaucracy. And of course, all of this was because everything in Soviet Union was owned by the state, by the government, which required everything to be registered. They were quite lucky. Their permission arrived not in two or three months, but in a couple of weeks. Their next destination was Kiev, Ukraine, and there is a passage that I would like to read it out to you. Uh, Steinbeck says, If the United States were completely destroyed from New York to Kansas, we would have about the area of destruction the Ukraine has. If six million people were killed, not counting soldiers, 15% of the population, you would have an idea of the casualties of the Ukraine. There are mines which never opened because the Germans threw thousands of bodies down into the shafts. Even reading this passage gives me goosebumps and chills just to imagine the amount of devastation. There was one question that Kappa and Steinbeck were asked by all Ukrainians that they met, and that was, does United States want to start war with the Soviet Union? What do your leaders say? Are they aggressive? Do they want to start another war? And it was perhaps one of the first times that I noticed that Steinbeck was struggling with describing the horrors. This was before they went to Stalingrad, where there was another moment in Steinbeck's writing where I noticed that um, he really struggles to describe the full feelings that the people uh, experience there. Their next destination were two villages and they met a lot of uh, expressive characters there. There are beautiful photographs that, that Kappa had made of those uh, very eccentric, very charismatic people. But there was another thing that Steinbeck noticed that in the villages, the most of the inhabitants were women and there weren't many men left. And this had a very profound and deep impression on Steinbeck because he was so surprised not to see any man at all that this proportion was really huge. Their next destination was Stalingrad and of course I, I'm going to tell you about the things that Steinbeck observed there but um, I wanted to say that these things that I'm telling you are not uh, spoilers. They are not going to ruin the experience of this book for you because these kind of books are really difficult to be spoiled. They have to be read to be fully experienced. They went to Stalingrad and there, it, and there they saw unexploded shells of the bombs that were left after the battle. They've seen the famous Pavlov's house which defended itself against the the uh, superior German forces. It's said that half a million people died in the Battle of Stalingrad. Some of the things that really got stuck into my memory were uh, that many people continued to live in the rubbles. Uh, Steinbeck describes a young girl or a young teenage girl which uh, crawled out of the ruins of the building that collapsed. He saw young kids who from early ages of their lives were encountered by death because their fathers were soldiers at the front and they died. Of course, Soviet officials tried to impress those American journalists which came to visit. And they brought different gifts that were received by British, American, and different other uh, officials from various countries. And um, I would like to read the passage uh, here. He says, A feeling of sadness came over us, for these were the offerings of the heads of governments, a copy of medieval sword, a copy of an ancient shield, some parchment phrases, and many high-sounding sentiments. The world had pinned a fake medal on Stalingrad, when what it needed was a half a dozen bulldozers. And of course, in Stalingrad as well, they were asked many times whether there is going to be another war, and this time with the United States. I assume this is the recurring theme of this book.
the last part of the Soviet Union that they saw was Georgia. And uh, Steinbeck says that it seems that many Russians think that when they die, they will go to Georgia because that country seems to be a heaven for them. And Georgia was much richer than every other part of the Soviet Union that they have seen. They, they could see a lot of energetic people and uh, lots of culture. They could see churches once again, uh, although many of them were closed because Soviet Union was a secular, atheistic country. And one of the perhaps key features of Georgians that they witnessed was their adherence and their love for poetry. It seems, he said, that the poetry is what defines Georgians as a nation. They were constantly asking Kappa and uh, Steinbeck to recite some of the American poetry, of, and they were asking whether poets were praised in the United States, and Steinbeck and Kappa said that the poets are the joy of just a very small group people in the United States, not as much as in Georgia, where every child has to learn uh, verses by heart and I guess this is all about this book that I wanted to tell you about and I really enjoyed reading it and this book is truly so timeless. When Steinbeck received his Nobel Prize for literature many people were against it both in Sweden and in the United States. They accused him of uh, lack of talent, of second-rate philosophizing. The Swedish Academy awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature to him because they said of his authentic and genuine insights into the lives of ordinary people. And I think it is very well deserved. I believe that this book should be read once again, particularly because the divisions between the United States and Russia still remain very big. I'll leave some links and uh, further material below. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you a lot for watching.